have its consequences. As a country, we remain steadfast in our resolve to bring up. Well, leaders have to call for solidarity to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic, concrete measures to tackle the climate crisis, and commitments to ensure global peace as part of a high-level general debate of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly. The humanitarian crisis in Texas as tens of thousands of asylum seekers are forcibly removed from the United States has sparked condemnation of the Biden administration's immigration policy. Israeli soldiers besieged the Palestinian population of the Shufat refugee camp. From the Telesur studios in Havana, I am Ray Gomez. This is from the south. We begin with the news. It will be fuel for disunity, anger, and will be a real threat to peace and security. The high level general debate of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly continues. Early this Wednesday, heads of states and other representatives have met to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the Durban Declaration and Plan of Action, conceived in 2001 aimed at achieving tolerance and respect for diversity. Under the theme Building Resilience uh, Through Hope to Recover from COVID 19, Rebuild Sustainability, Respond to the Needs of the Planet, Respect the Rights of People, and Revitalize the United Nations, the general debate addresses present issues affecting the international community, such as the COVID 19 pandemic pandemic vaccination rollout and preparedness ahead of future health crisis. Climate change and action to tackle it are also a key feature of the discussions. In this context, the president of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa, said slavery has been one of the darkest times in history. We acknowledge that some progress has been made since the adoption of the Durban Declaration and Programme of Action 20 years ago. However, we have many more obstacles to overcome because Africans in general and Africans from the diaspora in particular continue to face problems of inequalities. We have noted the alarming uptick in racial discrimination around the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has further exacerbated this. We acknowledge that some progress has been made since the adoption of the Durban Declaration and Programme of Action 20 years ago. However, we have many more obstacles to overcome because Africans in general and Africans from the diaspora in particular continue to face problems of inequalities. We have noted the alarming uptick in racial discrimination around the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has further exacerbated this. The Taliban have asked to address world leaders at the United Nations General Assembly this week in New York City. A UN committee will rule on the request, uh, but it is unlikely to happen during the current session of the body. The group, uh, which is control of Afghanistan last month, challenged uh, the credentials of the country's former United Nations ambassadors, who they said they no longer represented the country. According to a UN spokesperson, the committee and the Taliban are not likely to meet before the end of the General Assembly session next Monday. Until then, under UN rules, Shulam Izakzai will remain Afghanistan's ambassador to the global body. And we now move to Colombia, where the citizen power movement announced it was uh, joining uh, the historic path and uh, electoral alliance formed by several progressive parties and social movements seeking to put up a uh, united front in elections of next year. We have the details uh, with our correspondent Hernán Tovar. Eligible to vote in Colombia is approximately 38 million. They will have the option of choosing on March 13, 2022, the lawmakers who will represent them in Congress, as well as the president of the nation in the first round of the balloting process, set for May 29th. With their sights set on the polls, movements and parties are planning their approaches and consolidating their coalitions. This is how Citizen Power, the movement led by former Senator Piedad Cordova, decided to join this historic pact electoral alliance that brings together several progressive and leftist political organizations in Colombia.
In the case of Piedad Cordoba, well, she's a significant person not only. We'll be right back after this very short break. Welcome back. People seeking asylum continue to work across the Rio Bravo River from Mexico into the United States as part of a humanitarian crisis that has sparked condemnation of the U.S. policy of mass deportations. Images of tens of thousands of mostly Haitian asylum seekers camping under a bridge in the Texas borders city of uh, the Rio in the hopes of being granted entry into the U.S. after long and dangerous journeys have received national attention in recent days. The move by the Biden administration to begin mass deportations following a widely condemned Trump era order has only sparked further indignation and calls from human rights groups to respect their right to asylum. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, Mexico stressed that it wants a regional agreement to tackle the tide of people arriving at the two countries' borders. Foreign Secretary Marcelo Ebrard said he had raised a proposal in a telephone conversation with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Monday, in which they discussed the arrivals of Haitians with refugee status in Brazil and Chile. On Tuesday, United States Vice President Kamala Harris stated that images of which cause a storm on social media of U.S. border tents, agents on horseback in Texas charging at Haitian asylum seekers with their long rings were horrible. Right groups uh, have uh, stressed the pictures evoke times uh, when mounted police or prison guards are uh, routinely used to uh, whip against uh, black Americans, recalling 19th century sins of the violence of slavery. What I saw depicted about um, those individuals on horseback treating human beings the way they were is horrible. And um, I fully support what is happening right now, which is a thorough investigation into exactly what is going on there. Um, but human beings should never be treated that way. And I'm deeply troubled about it. And I'll also be talking with Secretary of Mayorkas today. An attempt to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky was shot at in an attempted at assassination that left his car's driver wounded. Ukrainian police said in a statement that a car that Cherish Fear was traveling in came under fire in the village of Lyznik with uh, more than 10 bullets uh, hit and a vehicle. The president's aid was not hurt. Special police operation is underway to search uh, for the perpetrators and police are appealing for information about the circumstances of the assassination attempt. President Zelensky vowed uh, his government's response would be strong and said it would continue his efforts to fight corruption and reform the country. During a high-level meeting in Austria, Syria denounced that its use of nuclear arsenal is a threat to regional and international peace and security. During his statement at the 65th session of the General Conference of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the Syrian ambassador Hassan Hadour denounced the aggressive behavior of Israel in the region. According to his remarks, in addition to retaining nuclear potential outside the framework of comprehensive safeguards agreements, it represents a grave uh, danger to the non-proliferation regime and a threat to regional and international peace and security. The Syrian ambassador also stated that the Israeli recognition of its responsibility for the continued aggression against Syria demands that the agency immediately begins sending inspection missions to Israel. On Wednesday, China's foreign ministry denounced the U.S. and U.K. deal to share highly sensitive nuclear submarine technology with Australia, a key part of uh, three countries' in newly established security partnership, AUKUS, which is a violation to the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. The nuclear submarine cooperation among the U.S., the U.K., and Australia seriously undermines regional peace and stability, intensifies the arms race, undermines international nuclear non-proliferation efforts, and runs counter to the wishes of the countries in the region. The U.S., the U.K., and Australia 
should abandon the mentality of Cold War and zero-sum games, and the narrow geopolitical concept follow the trend of peace and development and stop building small groups and circles. Thai police arrested a university student on charges of sedition and computer crimes. The police apprehended the student activist Panusaya Sitchi Radwada Tanakula, also known as Ren. The activist is a key figure in the United Front of Tamasad and demonstration. Officers said Panusaya was wanted on an arrest warrant issued by the criminal court on charges of violation, violating a man's section 116 of the criminal code or sedition and uh, the Computer Crime Act. The officers seized computers and mobile phones for further examination. The OFTD has been uh, one of the main groups involved in political protest that began in mid-2020. Social movements uh, have been demanding the Prime Minister's resignation a full rewrite of the Constitution and reform of the monarchy. A vast river of molten lava from Cumbre Vieja volcano in the Canary Islands was edging towards the sea, destroying everything in its path and provoking fears it will generate clouds of toxic gases when it hits the water. A new fissure emerged on the slopes of the volcano uh, overnight, bunching uh, out more lava and forcing hundreds more people to flee their homes. The regional head of uh, Canary Islands said the lava flow is moving towards the sea at 200 meters per hour and uh, has already swept away everything in its path. Located on La Palma Island, the volcano has forced more than 6,000 people from their homes and destroyed a large number of properties and land span in a huge area since it erupted on Sunday afternoon. So far, it has destroyed more than 100 buildings, on uh, which uh, 63 were homes. Carbon dioxide emissions from wildfires in the past two months touched a new high since uh, 2003, according to scientists uh, from the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service. The institution of the European Union found that burning forests uh, released uh, 1.3 gigatons of uh, carbon dioxide last month, mostly in North America and Siberia. This was the highest uh, since the monitoring service began measurements in 2003. The report showed uh, that not only large parts of the northern hemisphere were affected during this year's boreal fire season, but the number of fires and their persistence and intensity were remarkable. Scientists are concerned that areas with dense vegetation are becoming a source rather than a sink of greenhouse gases. An earthquake of magnitude 5.9 struck near Melbourne in southern Australia on Wednesday. Authorities from Geoscience Australia said there is a chance of significant aftershocks in the upcoming weeks, a month after the state was wrecked by the largest earthquake in its history. The initial quake was followed by six aftershocks with magnitudes between 2.5 to 4.1. There were 100 requests for assistance, around 55 of them, in metropolitan Melbourne and that most of the minor structural damage was to chimneys and facades. I just heard this huge noise and just like the whole house was shaking. So when I went outside, it was just so many people had come out as well and just watching this building just like crumbling down and then just the smoke just rising was just immense. So I, man, I, I, I just went, got back from my morning walk actually. Um, got inside and clocked on for work, and I heard a massive bang. Looked outside, smoke everywhere. Um, people were screaming. Yeah, really, just people, the the shop owners were out the front, uh, screaming everywhere. Was, I don't think an uh, earthquake like this has happened since the 90s, actually. So we have more stories coming up after this final short break.
Welcome back. On Wednesday morning, Israeli soldiers besieged the Palestinian population of the Shufa the refugee camp. And in an act of lawlessness, uh, undercover Israeli agents infiltrated Shufat, northeast of occupied Jerusalem, and attacked dozens of Palestinians before abducting four youths immediately after jumping from the back of a civilian van and then chased other residents uh, without being able to capture them. Afghanistan faces by the same shortages uh, due to disrupted border presence and a limited operation of banks. Almost all medicine is imported from the neighboring countries uh, such as Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Iran, and Turkey. However, the border crossings uh, between Afghanistan and its neighbors were disrupted in uh, the lead up uh, to the Taliban takeover and normal operations are yet to resume. Officials said the number of visitors at state hospitals has increased since uh, the change of government. The good news is that international donors have increased uh, their focus towards those uh, health institutions. But Hida Marouf, acting minister of public health, said many of the problems in this sector have been left uh, over from the, the previous government. Yes, since the takeover, banks are closed for international transactions. As the banks are closed, we can't transfer payments to suppliers. If we don't transfer money to the suppliers legally, they will not be able to deliver us the medicine and prices will definitely rise. When demand is high and supply is low, the prices naturally go up. We are facing a shortage in supply of essential medicines. And it led us having uh, few or no supply in most of uh, our health facilities, including uh, essential medicine, uh, fuel, oxygen, uh, staff salary. We've been trying, we've been trying to work with different stakeholders to see if we can fulfill the, uh, the urgent needs, but we haven't been able uh, to do it successfully. Meanwhile, political tensions continue. Taliban vehicles uh, were attacked in eastern Afghanistan on Wednesday, killing at least uh, two fighters and three civilians and the latest violence since uh, the group's takeover of the country in mid-August. In one attack, a gunman opened fire on a Taliban vehicle at a local gas station in the provincial capital of, of Jalalabad, killing two fighters and a gas station attendant. Witnesses said a child was also among the victims. Two Taliban were wounded in a separate attack a bombing of another vehicle, another bombing of a Taliban vehicle in Jalalabad also wounded a person nearby. No one claimed immediate responsibility for Wednesday attacks, although the Islamic State group, which is headquartered in eastern Afghanistan, took responsibility for similar attacks in Jalalabad last week that killed eight people. The Taliban are under pressure to contain its longtime rivals, the ISIS militants, in part to make good on a promise uh, to the international community that they will prevent the staging of terror attacks from Afghan soil. During his visit to a military base in Khartoum, the head of Sudan's sovereignty council general Abdel Fattah Burhan called for unity after a reported failed coup attempt by the group of soldiers. Despite the attempted coup, the country's ruling council and military remained in control. It did, however, underscore the fragility of Sudan's path to democracy more than two years after the military's overthrow of Omar al-Bashir amid a public uprising against his three-decade rule. A military official said that over three dozen troops, including high-ranking officers, were behind the attempt and that they tried to take over several government institutions but were stopped in their tracks. Lebanon raised the fuel prices for the second time in less than a week, amid severe raging and spurred by the collapse of the subsidy system that has depleted state coffers. Facing its worst ever financial crisis, the country has gradually increased fuel prices in recent months because the central bank can no longer afford to fund fuel imports. The latest price hike, expected to be followed by further increases in coming weeks, is widely seen as a prelude to final and a definite lifting of fuel subsidies by the government. The revised price list published by the Energy Ministry on Wednesday set the price of 20 liters of a 95 octane petrol at $13, up from $11 the previous week.
a team of monarch havers has made what is believed to be the first descent to the bottom of Yemen's fable well Barhut, which many locals believe it is a prison for genius. Inside the well Tillman cave, a exploration team found snakes, dead animals, and cave pearls, but no signs of the supernatural. Over the centuries, stories have circulated of malign figures known as jinns of genius living in the will, which is some regard as uh, the gate of hell. Jimin has been embroiled in the devastating civil wars since uh, 2014 that has triggered uh, that the United States uh, nation subscribes as the world's uh, worst humanitarian crisis, with two-thirds of its 30 million population dependent on some form of aid. We've come to the end of this uh, news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at Telesur English. You can also follow us on social media for all the latest news over on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm Ray Gomez. I thank you for watching.